Trying to keep these 31 year old engines alive. I really hope it's this. The rest of the issues could be very expensive. My name is Billy. This is Sierra. And this is our dog, Jetty. And this is Adrenaline, our full time floating home and office. Join us as we sail, surf, swim, dive, fish, and kiteboard through new and exotic places every day. Make sure you subscribe below and sit back and enjoy. All right, we've been in Prickly Bay here for a few days. We went for a little surf the past couple afternoons. Our friends Bo and Brandy are here and they're all safe. They got their boat hauled a couple bays over. We've been working on a computer all day, every day, trying to get caught up on the videos for you guys. But we're gonna take a little break. We're gonna go for a snorkel. Supposedly there's some octo octopi over there. So we're gonna try to find some octopi. <laughs> I found a surfboard fit. Good girl. Did you want to go snorkeling? Hi, good girl. Good girl. That was cool, huh? Yeah, we saw a lot of cool stuff. We saw a bunch of octopus and eel, lots of lobster, a big jack. Saw more than I was expecting. Even though it's like shallow and kind of murky and we weren't expecting much, we saw some really cool things. Yeah, and it's so close to like all these other boats, but I haven't seen anyone else go over there. You want to join? Ready? Say? Go get it! Oh, yeah. Go get the toy! Go get it! Get your dog. Get your dog. 
Doggy. Yeah, I've got, I've got one of the original ones. <laughs> oh, you're good, We just picked up that second block that we ordered from the marine store last week. The one with the cam on it, here it is. This Barton block, triple with a cam and Beckett. And that's replacing this old one that broke. Ooh. But it's gonna be a lot smoother, I think. All right, and we got it all mounted up. Gonna have to replace this line pretty soon. Uh, <laughs> trying to keep these 31 year old engines alive. There's a chance it's not as catastrophic as I thought it was originally. So we're gonna check a few things out, just check a few simple things off the list. And then if it's more than that, there's still a chance it's not as catastrophic. Even if it was like a pressure getting past a ring, I don't know if rings can crack or cylinders can crack or I, I don't know. But even if it's that, you can still rebuild these engines and they're relatively simple. I just don't know, I don't think it's worth it to, then again, we don't really have money for a brand new engine, so it might have to be worth it to rebuild. Just pray for the super simple stuff. A couple people have been mentioning it lately. Um, you wanna just tell them what your collarbone is because it's protruding right now. I broke my collarbone a few years ago in college and uh, it just healed out a little bit more. And then when I work out with a barbell, it like hits it. So it's just like the bone calci calcifying. It's hard, it doesn't hurt. It's not like swollen or anything. So thank you everyone for being worried, but he's all right. Yeah, I know. I'm sick of these old engines too. Well, another day working on the engine. So it's not the super simple fix I thought it could be, which was that breather vent tube. Uh, looked through the tube, blew through it, it's clear. Um, opened up the whole little system and there's no screen in it. There's just a little kind of baffle. I don't know if there's supposed to be a screen in it, but anyway, the whole thing is clear, perfectly clear. What we know is two things. The engine stalled and we had oil pushing out of the dipstick tube. When the engine stalls, it's probably not catastrophic. It's probably just a fuel or air problem. And when pressure is pushing out of the dipstick hole, it's somehow pressure is getting into that crankcase. I don't know why the breather valve isn't relieving that pressure enough because it's not clogged. It's definitely not clogged. Those are the two things we know. I did some research online and uh, some people suggested some things like uh, valves not seating correctly, cracked piston, cracked rings, blah, blah, blah. But one of the obvious things, the next best obvious thing is the fuel lift pump. So the pump that brings the fuel from the tank into the beginning of the engine. And that's operated by a cam lever, which is kind of connected to the oil system of the engine. That's one of the parts of the engine where there's fuel and there's also oil. Now, if that pump went bad, it would cause the engine to stall because there wouldn't be enough fuel getting pumped into the engine. That explains that a bad diaphragm or a bad seal on that lift pump would cause that and it would also allow fuel to get into the oil. So this could explain everything. So there's two local Yanmar dealers here. One guy did not have this in stock and it would take a while and be a little bit expensive. But the other place did. Uh, Palm Tree Marine here in Grenada had one in stock. It was like a 160 bucks US or something, including the gasket. And this guy, a uh, guy John from Palm Tree Marine dropped it off and he was super nice and I kind of asked him what about my idea and he said, yeah, that could totally be it. He gave me a good way to test it too, so we're gonna test it as well before we take the old one off. Gasket. There it is, brand new and shiny. So it just goes onto the side of the engine, fuel comes in one side, 
comes out the other side. And this is the little cam <laughs> lever thing that's mechanically operated that pumps the fuel using a diaphragm, I think. I think I got that right. So this guy John was saying, all you do is unbolt the old one leave the two fuel hoses connected and use that primer bulb that we have in the fuel system. And if you squeeze that primer bulb and you see fuel coming out of this part, that means the diaphragm's bad and that's exactly what's happening. So that's what we're gonna try. We'll do that before we install this sucker and make sure that's the problem. I guess I could have done that before I bought this, but well, at least we have a spare brand new one. Doesn't really smell like diesel fuel. Just smells like burnt, like oil. Let's see, where's this guy? All right, I got the fuel pump unbolted. Now I'm gonna have Sierra squeeze that primer bulb to see if we have fuel coming out. Hey, Sierra! Yeah. Can you do that same thing you did the other day? Squeeze the primer bulb, please? I really hope it's this really hope it's this because I think the rest of the potential issues could be very expensive like an injector pump or rebuilding the freaking engine okay thank you bah. well Sierra squeezed the bowl they got hard pretty quick and stay hard and I didn't see any leaks coming out of this injector pump I mean this uh lift pump Dang, I was hoping we would see that right away. So do we replace it with a new lift pump anyway and just see if that solves the problem? Let me let me play with it a little more. Whatever. I mean we have this new pump. Might as well just trade it out and see if maybe it's a small leak. It's only happening at high engine revolutions. I, I replaced the lift pump. Of course, like everything else on the boat, it took way longer than it should have. Just trying to get the stupid gasket and nut bolts into place. Ah, but it's on. Brand new lift pump. We're going to start it up and see what happens. See if that bulb stays, the priming bulb stays hard while the engine's running. Probably don't want to run it too long if it is actually diesel fuel in the oil. But we'll run it for a little bit. Hopefully we don't see any uh, pressure in the crankcase and hopefully that bulb stays tight. Oh, and then we gotta clean this space up. Well, I'm done for the day. I'm frustrated. <laughs> we still have a little bit of blow by, and from the beginning, it hasn't been a ton of blow by. It's just a little bit of, like, just enough pressure to push the dipstick tube out, and it's not a very good seal from the dipstick tube. It's a very loose seal anyway. I zip tied this dipstick tube in place for now. And that primer bulb is still getting soft, but I ran the engine for like an hour today. I ran it in neutral, I ran it uh, revved up a little bit, I ran it in gear forward and re in gear and reverse pretty good. Um, and it never stalled out. Yeah, never stalled out. So, I mean, maybe that could have been something as simple as a fuel filter that I replaced uh, right after it happened. And then maybe the blow by is just, uh, I don't know. Well, the next easiest thing to do, I think, is just to check the valve lash clearance. Valve lash clearance? The clearance in between the valves or something like that. I need feeler gauges, um, which I gotta search the boot. I don't think I brought them, unfortunately. So I might have to go buy or borrow a set of feeler gauges and do just check the clearance and maybe adjust those valves. Um, and that could, that could maybe solve the blow by. All right, we're going. We're going to the beach or something. What are you doing down here? Trying to fix the engine. I'm adjusting the valve lash clearance. 
adjusting the valves. Yeah, I haven't done this before. It's not super complicated. I'm just trying to figure out what top that dead center of the engine is. There's a mark on the flywheel and, or there's a few marks. I'm just trying to figure out which one is which. And then just use these feeler gauges to make sure that the valves are adjusted properly. Finally, I gave in and just got a professional over here for like 45 minutes just to check it out, see what he thinks and see what our options are and, and what he recommended. And pretty much he came down here and he was able to turn the flywheel by hand, um, even without de the decompression levers flicked, which means that um, the compression is terrible in the in the starboard engine. He said one cylinder is like borderline okay and the other cylinder is just so bad. He can turn it easily by hand through that cylinder. So when there's no compression, we just have no power. We don't know if there is no compression because the rings are bad or worst case scenario, I think would be something like a cracked piston. Um, so yeah, he said pretty much if it was his boat, he was a very down-to-earth guy, a really nice South African guy named John from uh, Palm Tree Marine. He said pretty much if it was his boat, he would rebuild it or look for a used engine that is running well um, if, and that's all if we're not going to keep the boat for super long. He said if you're going to keep the boat for 5, 10 years, he's like definitely just invest in a, a set of new Yanmars or, or beta diesel engines. and. Oh man, I just I just don't think we're going to keep our boat long enough to make it worth investing in brand new engines, unfortunately. Um, it would be so nice to have this boat with new engines. It would be amazing, but I don't think it's worth it. So right now we're just kind of limping along. We can still use the engine. He said it probably won't hurt it, but it could just st stop like catastrophically. Like I don't know. So we're just trying not to use the starboard engine as much as possible. We use the port engine still. The starboard engine still runs. We can still use it. It just has very little power and, um, yeah, a little bit of blow by. So what do you think our best bet is? Well, it's not going to be very easy to find one over here. We'll probably look in St. Martin and see if there's anything. And if not, we'll just limp our way back to Florida. If this was a situation going down, we probably would have had to stop somewhere. We couldn't have comfortably gone to Windward this whole way to Grenada, knowing that our engine could just die at any second. But she may, she helped us get all the way here. And now we're taking the easy way back. So limping along. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community offering thousands of classes in all different areas. I've been taking Savre 3 ds course, Diesel Fundamentals. It's helped refresh my understanding of how diesel engines work and allows me to understand what problems might be causing the symptoms that we're having with our diesel engine. I really like learning from Skillshare Online because it's very visual. I can see the animations of the diesel engines, very interactive compared to something like just looking at a picture in a book. Skillshare is also super affordable. It is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And because they're sponsoring this video, if you click the link in the description, you can get two months of their premium membership for free. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. And thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And we'll see you guys next time.